Welcome to the fifth video in our series. In today's lesson, we're going to work on one of the movements called the cut. Using the tune we learned in the, in the fourth lesson, the Star of the County Down, I'm going to demonstrate a very basic but crucial movement on the tin whistle. The movement of the cut involves really two fingers, your ring finger on your left hand and your pointer finger on the left hand. The cut is going to interrupt the airflow, sort of like the tonguing technique that we learned in the last video. Starting on the D, you're going to use this ring finger to cut the note. It's a quick flick. You'll see I'm not lifting my finger up very high. It's very close to the tube of the tin whistle. The cut is one half of the roll. In this lesson, we're going to cover the base of the cut. The next lesson, we'll do the hit. I'm going to play the scale now, going up to the high B, in order for, to demonstrate what this looks like. Really, that is as basic as it gets with the, the movement of the cut. This is the first half of the roll, so it's a good idea to practice that exercise going up the scale several times before attempting the tune. It's just... The temptation early on is going to be to do something like that's a little bit exaggerated. It's really flicking it. Kind of like flicking a gnat off. Think of that quick movement. Similar to that. It's actually good practice just to sit and spend time on one note, playing it over and over and over again, cutting it with that finger. At the end of the day, is it going to make much of a difference whether you cut with your ring finger or your pointer finger? Not really. In fact, it might add a little variety to your music. It's a good rule of thumb, though, to be used to plant, being able to do both of them. I only explain it using the ring finger for the lower part of the tin whistle, the pointer finger for the top part, just as an introduction. I'm going to demonstrate why this is useful in the tune, The Star of the County Down. Keep in mind, there are a lot of times that we'll have three E's or two B's together. In the last video, we learned how to tongue those. In this video, we're going to emphasize the cut. It's a standard point to, to mention, and it's one that will be helpful for some of you. Don't feel when you're playing in a pub or you know, when you're learning tunes on your own that you have to cut or later hit all the various notes. Really, I'm just emphasizing it in this video in order to show how we use it and to give you practice using it. Once you master it, it's up to your discretion as to where to put it in and when you put it in. So following the star of the county down, I'm only going to play it one time through this first time. I'll stop and then two times again. You'll see that I exaggerated my, by moving my right hand out of the picture so that you could get a clearer shot. In general, it's bad form to lift your hand that far. You want to keep your hand pretty close to the tin whistle. In these videos, I tend to do it in order to show you the, and, and emphasize my fingers, but in general, you want to keep your hand pretty close. One other point from earlier. You'll recall when I played the scale, I think I even show on, a show on tape, that there's a little bit of difficulty playing that high C. It's because I have all my fingers off, and it's pretty seldom that all your fingers are off for any long amount of time, that good tin whistle holding is so important. It would be 
In fact, I can't think of any time that I would just hold the, the C up like this. I'd probably have two of my fingers covering the bottom in order to hold it securely. Is it going to make a big difference? No. You're probably going to be playing fast enough that you won't have to worry about it. It's just something to keep in mind. You'll not often have to hold the when you're playing a tune. You'll adapt. Just a point of discussion amongst yourselves. I'm going to play the tune two more times through, really emphasizing the cuts. Follow along as you, as you watch the video. If you run into problems, stop it, reverse it a little bit, and then replay it. that I played the, the cuts in the several different places, either with my top pointer finger or with my ring finger. It's just to show that you can do it either way, just by rule of thumb, ring finger for the notes on the lower part of the whistle, B finger for the top part of the whistle. This concludes this lesson. This is the first half of what will turn into the roll when we combine the cuts and the hats, the roll being one of the more popular and certainly pleasing to the ear movements in Irish music. Remember, the fundamental lessons that we cover in these early lessons are definitely going to pave your way to claiming your voice in the Irish tradition.